Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here to show you how you could gain maximum control over the low end in your mix using only one plugin. And today I'll be reviewing the low control plugin by Black Salt Audio. Now, Black Salt Audio is a new plugin company started by my good friend Jordan Valeriot of Hardcore Music Studio. And I was super excited to give these plugins a shot when I first heard that he'd be starting his own plugin company because I know Jordan has a very similar philosophy to what I have as far as audio production is concerned. And that is simplicity, keeping things simple yet effective. And I've spent a good month with these plugins and I'm already using them within real productions that I'm currently working on. Now in this video, I'll be focusing on the low control plugin and showing you how I'm using it on a bass track on a production that's currently in progress at my studio as we speak. So first things first, let me play the audio sample back and I'll show you how I'm using this plugin to achieve the bass sound that I'm really after. Let's take a listen. Okay, so that sample was by my good friends in a band called Mainline. We're currently wrapping up an EP over at the studio. Um, and I decided to do some pre-mixing on the tracks before we recorded vocals on this song. Now for the bass guitar, we used a Sansamp, actual Sansamp pedal on the way in through the DI box. Uh, and although it sounded cool, it had a nice grungy, dirty sound, I felt that the bass was lacking just some low end and some overall punch in the low frequency department, which I need in order to fill out the mix especially because this mix has a very fat drum sound. The bass really has to compete with the drum sound and just fill out that end of the frequency spectrum. So just quickly, I'm gonna go through the chain on my single bass track. Now, I often will split my bass track into two. Sometimes I'll have a low frequency track and then a distorted mid-range that I'll blend in. For this mix, since it's a more old school 80s style vibe, um, I really wanted to keep things simple. And I only have one bass track here. So I have some EQ just rolling off all frequencies below 54 Hertz and all frequencies above 6K. And just some notching in the mid range, just the ranges that were making the bass sound a little boxy, just some basic compression. And then finally, the big tamale here, the low control by Black Salt Audio. Now this plugin primarily does two things. The one side, which is called control, will control a specific frequency range that you predetermine. So the way I have it set is all frequencies below 114 Hertz are being controlled and compressed and just made a little more even and unmoving in the mix. So let me solo the bass track here and I'm gonna completely bypass the plugin. Let's take a listen. Now, if you were listening closely, you probably noticed that the bass was just a little more even and a little more powerful sounding in the sub range. And that's because, like I said, I have it set so all frequencies below 114 hertz are a little more compressed and just a little more evened out and unmoving. And I also have this control here that's called Enhance. And that's the other awesome thing about this plugin is not only will it control your low end, it'll enhance a specific range that you predetermine just simply by sliding this knob around. And I had it sit to around 55 hertz around there. Like I said, that range I felt was really lacking. The bass just didn't have enough oomph in the subs. And simply by setting my enhanced frequency at 55 hertz and cranking it up to 41%, it generated punch and harmonics in that range that was lacking in the first place. So again, just to be super clear, you have two components to this plugin, your control component and your enhanced component. And I'm using both and it's working wonders for this bass track. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna bypass both sections of the plugin. And let's just listen to what the control uh, component of the plugin is doing to my bass track. Now, because I have my band set to 114 Hertz, all the frequencies below 114 are extra solid and just a little more in control. Now the bass track was already compressed, but I still felt like that range below was lacking and just not controlled enough. And the control component of this plugin is taking care of this very nicely. Now as awesome and useful as the control section is, the enhanced section is really what took this bass sound over the top and just helped generate that extra punch that I was really looking for. But I felt that the Sans Amp pedal that we used in the studio just may have been lacking a little. So take a close listen. I'm just gonna bypass this once more and then I'll play the audio back and pay close attention to what the bass sounds like once 
I engage the enhance module within the plugin. So if you're listening with closed back headphones or with bigger speakers, the difference is night and day. It's almost like an element of the bass just appeared that wasn't there in the first place. And that's because the plugin is generating harmonics and just extra content based off of the source material. And again, let's hear the bass in context for the rest of the mix. So for me, no doubt this plugin is a huge time saver and I'll be using it across all of the songs on this EP since we used that same Sansan -San pedal, which sounded great, but just was lacking in the low frequency department. And I just felt that the bass needed a little more control below 100 Hertz. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm not a huge proponent of talking about gear. I only really will talk about gear on this channel if I really feel it's something that I will use in the real world and that isn't gimmicky and this plugin is anything but as you could hear it made a massive difference and all without having to mess with a bunch of bells and whistles that don't really do much i just have two basic controls here and i achieved the tone that i was looking for in the first place now there is a link to black salt audio's website where you can actually check out this plugin and demo it for yourself again there's a link below in this video's description and try it on some of your own material i think you'll be amazed at just how much it adds to low frequency information now in this tutorial, I only focused on bass guitar, but I'm excited to use this on kick drums, toms, synths, any sound where there's a low frequency component where you want maximum control and just enhance what's already there. All by just dialing in a few simple settings in a clean, minimalistic, and easy to use interface. And again, this sample is by my good friends at a band called Mainline. I will leave a link below to their music in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of our weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. If you're interested in some Frightbox swag, there's a link below to the Frightbox merch store. We've got t-shirts, mugs, and other cool stuff on the way. And finally, if you were a fan of the guitar tone heard in this mix, you could download the exact same impulse response that I used within this production. There's a link below to the free IR below in this video's description. Until next time. Happy mixing.